Hello, everyone. Thank you to the National Indian Health Board for inviting me to the 2021 National Tribal Public Health Summit. I'm Dr. Marcella Nunes-Smith. I serve as Senior Advisor to the White House COVID-19 Response Team and as Chair of the COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force. I'm delighted to be with you during the opening plenary this evening. Now, last week, we entered a new phase of the vaccination program and our efforts to put the pandemic behind us. On his 92nd day in office, the president marked our 200 millionth vaccination. And that day, the president also called on every employer in America to offer full pay to their employees for any time off needed to get vaccinated and for any time it takes to recover from the after effects of vaccination with a tax credit to help small and medium sized businesses achieve this. Understanding that many people face structural barriers to connecting to vaccine and we must address them. Just a week ago, we hit another important milestone. Everyone 16 years old and older everywhere in the country is now eligible for vaccine. By the end of May, we'll have enough vaccine supply for every adult who wants to be vaccinated. We have thousands of vaccinators at the ready and more than 75,000 convenient vaccination venues. As of last week, in fact, more than 90% of people in the country have a vaccine site within five miles of where they live. And further, we recognize access to easy, convenient, and trusted vaccination venues is key for the communities that have been the hardest hit. Within the first three weeks, the federal government set up federally run programs to address this and have since expanded on them. Community vaccination centers located in some of our hardest hit areas, providing vaccine supply directly as well to community health centers, expanding eligibility in those locations, providing vaccine supply directly to local pharmacies that serve people of color, people living in rural frontier areas, people in poverty, and also launched hundreds of mobile clinics to meet people where they are in addition to vaccinating our country's dialysis patients. A commitment to equitable vaccine access means putting resources where they matter. So the administration also announced nearly $150 million to community-based healthcare providers so they could aid in the COVID-19 response. And another $12 million to address rural health disparities specifically. Late last month, a $10 billion investment was announced focused on our highest risk communities across the country. This included funding for community health centers, community health workers, and local efforts on the ground. At the center of these investments is the recognition that achieving equity is hyper-local work, done most successfully in partnership and collaboration with those who are trusted community and faith leaders. And the Community core is now launched with over 8,000 partners to date armed with accurate information and resources. As you know all too well, American Indian, Alaska Native peoples are at among the highest risk for COVID-19 and the complications. Let me talk about some investments there. So a little over a week ago, the federal administration announced a $4 billion investment through the American Rescue Plan to combat COVID-19 in Indian country. This announcement followed tribal consultation and urban confer in early March by the Biden administration to engage tribal stakeholders in identifying exactly how to urgently and most effectively allocate the resources provided by and through the American Rescue Plan. Now, more than a million doses of COVID-19 vaccine have already been administered. And last week's announcement will help IHS, tribal governments, as well as tribal and urban Indian health programs accelerate this progress. The funding coming again through the American Rescue Plan will expand COVID-19 vaccinations, testing and treatment. Will increase preventive health services to indigenous people who are at higher risk for COVID-19. Expand hospitals and health clinics ability to serve their communities during the pandemic and beyond and provide IHS, tribal health programs, and urban Indian health programs with needed funding to make up for lost reimbursements experienced during the pandemic. 
Specifically, $600 million will be allocated to increase COVID-19 vaccinations in Indian country. These funds can support mobile vaccination efforts in rural or hard to reach areas or large scale vaccination events, other activities to help connect American Indians, Alaska natives to vaccines on their reservations and in their communities. Additionally, IHS, tribal and urban Indian health programs can use this funding to provide support for trusted local voices and medical professionals to conduct outreach into communities and build vaccine confidence, efforts that are already seeing success. Another $1 billion will be allocated for detecting, diagnosing, contact tracing, monitoring, and mitigating COVID-19 infections in the first place. This funding will allow IHS to strengthen their efforts for contact tracing and increase drive-through testing sites, pop-up testing sites, and also the purchase of PPE medical supplies test and importantly therapeutics. IHS will provide $2 billion to replace those lost revenues attributable to the COVID-19 pandemic, which reduced reimbursement from Medicare, Medicaid, VA, and also private commercial insurance. These funds will help make up for the financial loss across the entire Indian healthcare system due to reduced patient visits. And this funding will strengthen long-term healthcare in Indian country by helping IHS, tribal and urban Indian health programs invest in high quality provider salaries, services particularly impacted by the pandemic like dental healthcare and critical accreditation requirements. This $4 billion investment also supports more than $84 million in assistance for urban Indian organizations, $140 million for health IT and necessary equipment to provide telehealth services, and $500 million to support overall health services in Indian country. Look, an equitable pandemic response, we know. It isn't simply the right thing to do, which it is. There's also the science of it. We cannot beat this virus without making sure that there's a plan that works for all communities. I don't have to tell you all, you know the consequences of unequal, uneven social, structural, economic, and environmental conditions, conditions that determine people's risk of illness and determine their access to high quality health care. Yeah, that's the outcome of avoidable injustices historical and contemporary. This administration is well aware of the history of broken promises made to Indian country. Knowing this, trust must be rebuilt. So that's what we're doing in this administration. We're working to rebuild trust through words, also through actions. During a public health crisis like COVID-19, we need leaders who follow the science and encourage others to do the same. Wearing a mask or getting vaccinated should not be a political statement, it should be a public health one. The important part of rebuilding trust as well is making sure people can connect with vaccination easily when it is their turn, which it is now, and when they are at yes. And in order to make sure that happens, you know, we have to make sure that we've done our part. We have to make sure that the communities like the ones we come from have the information they need, that they know the vaccines have been safely administered to millions of Americans, that they know the vaccines are effective and critically that they will make a positive difference in our everyday lives. That's why conversations like this one are so important. You all are tribal leaders, healthcare providers, policymakers, advocates. You lead community and grassroots organizations. People listen to you. So it's critical that you have all the facts. We need trusted messengers like you to help build vaccine confidence, ensuring that as we work to continue improving access, all the folks back home are ready to take advantage of the best in scientific discovery. It's absolutely why equity will be front and center as we create a path forward. Equity takes intention and has been at the center of the federal vaccination programs and many states and of course tribes and territories, local jurisdictions 
have been following best and promising practices. So where do we go from here? The next phase of our vaccination program has four key areas of focus. First, we will continue to vaccinate millions of people each day. Right now, we're averaging nearly 3 million shots per day. But going forward, we expect daily vaccination rates will moderate, will fluctuate. We've gotten vaccinations to the most at risk and those most eager to get vaccinated as quickly as possible. We will continue those efforts, but we know reaching others will take time and focus. Second, we will continue to increase accessibility and make it easier for everyone to get vaccinated. So we're working with states, tribes, of course, with businesses, with doctors, with local pharmacies, other partners to make it even easier for people across the country to get vaccinated. As you know, doctors, clinicians are powerful and important messengers. We're working directly with clinicians to encourage their patients to get vaccinated. And we're working with states and everyone else to make sure that primary care providers get the vaccine doses that they seek so more people can get vaccinated at their doctor's office the same way they're used to getting other vaccinations. You will also see us focusing on other ways to make it as easy as possible for Americans to get a shot including encouraging walk-up availability at pharmacies so that's no appointment needed and at other vaccination sites and providing transportation options for those who need them. Again, taking into account those structural barriers. Third, now that everyone 16 and over is eligible for a free COVID shot across the nation, we are laser focused on educating the public about these life-saving vaccines. As people have seen their friends, family and neighbors get vaccinated, confidence has increased. And over the coming days and weeks, we will double down in getting the facts of the American people about COVID-19, about the protection vaccines offer, and the critical path vaccines play in us getting back to our normal way of life. And finally, as we have since the start of the administration, we continue to place, of course, equity at the center of everything we do. So we are committed to reaching everyone in our response, ensuring everyone has equitable access to vaccines, expanding our community health center program, deploying more mobile and pop-up clinics, always, always meeting people where they are. I wanna take a couple of minutes and talk to you about one other key element to how we are centering equity in our pandemic response. And that's the COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force. The task force is officially launched, is already hard at work generating recommendations on promoting equity in the response, but also in the recovery. I have the honor of serving as chair of the task force, which was established by executive order the president's first full day in office. And the task force is part of the administration's government-wide effort to identify and eliminate health and social disparities that result in disproportionately higher rates of exposure, illness, hospitalization, and death related to COVID-19. Vice President Harris, in fact, set a blueprint for us on how to advise this commitment during her time in the Senate, where she introduced the COVID-19 Racial and Ethnic Disparities Task Force Act. And our charge is to provide these specific recommendations to the president through the coordinator of the COVID-19 response for mitigating the health inequities caused or exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, and also for preventing these kinds of inequities in the future. The task force is advisory in nature, but the president has access to make some recommendations on a range of issues, including how agencies, tribes, and others can equitably allocate COVID-19 resources and disperse relief funds on strategies for effective outreach and communication to minoritized populations and the hardest hit communities, and on how to improve cultural and linguistic responsiveness within the federal government. How can we advance cultural responsiveness, language access and sensitivity towards Native Americans, Asian Americans, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders in the context of the federal government's COVID-19 response? It's part of the charge. And of course, data. Data and data collection is a specific focus of the task force charge, particularly collecting data for those groups, marginalized, minoritized, medically underserved, hardest hit, and identifying data sources that would enable development of short-term targets for pandemic-related actions, as well as address longer-term data shortfalls and challenges to better prepare and respond to future pandemics. The task force includes 12 non-federal members who bring expertise 
lived experience and insights into those groups that have been hardest hit and includes representation from Indian country. It is an honor to have Victor Joseph, councilman from the native village of Tanana and chair of the HHS Secretary's Tribal Advisory Committee among the members. Several federal members have also joined. These members offer critical perspective on some of the most effective levers that can be pulled in a whole of government effort for COVID-19 health equity. And they will work with the other 12 members on four subcommittees focused on data analytics and research, healthcare access and quality, structural drivers and xenophobia, and communications and collaboration. Our first task force meeting focused on data and the second public task force meeting focused on vaccine confidence and equitable vaccine access. Our third meeting will take place this Friday, April 30th, starting at 2 p.m. EST. We invite you to watch the meeting live at hhs.gov backslash live. And please, I invite you to also submit public comment by emailing COVID19HETF at hhs.gov. So in closing, I just want to thank you, really. Your work is tireless. And during this, which is National Minority Health Month, I want to reiterate what we all know about equity work. You know, first, you have to show up. Then you have to listen and be willing to learn. And you must be humble. And a word on the federal government's federal trust responsibility with tribes. The federal administration will continue to honor the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with tribal governments and respect tribal sovereignty. And communities are the experts in what they need to thrive. And each of you represents the richness of community across the country. I am so grateful for all you do every day. Thank you again for the opportunity to join you. And please be well.